the people who are here who are in the art uh, you know market and wondering what we're doing in the nando's you know talking about the art market let me fill you in in every Nando's restaurant, there's a lot of uh, Southern African art. You might have not, you know, paid attention to it, but uh, every Nando's has art. So now maybe you'll pay a closer look. Nando's is the largest collector of Southern African artists in the world. Just the UK is housing 9,000 pieces. We have had the chance to work with Nando's over now three years, going to our third year um, this uh, this year in London. Uh, we had the chance to um, present some of of their initiative through their nonprofit project called the Spears Art Trust. Um, and the first year we did um, collaboration was presenting the Kubica Beads, which is an amazing fine bead studio based in Cape Town. And we had the chance to show the work um, at 154, and it was really well appreciated. And uh, I think the girls had a blast. It's managed by three fantastic, energetic artists. Um, and I'll let, I will let Tamlin talk about it a bit, uh, a bit, uh, a bit more during the panel of discussion. And I have to say, last year we did for our first time, um, they took a booth and showed some of their amazing artists um, at 154 last year. Uh, I had the chance to be completely immersed to the, you know, the Nando's initiatives uh, a couple of months uh, back now. And it's just like, I'm amazed and I wish everybody could go and see and like see all the locations and all the initiatives. Some of the great project they're doing um, is something called the Creative Block. It's at the entrance that you probably be seen where they kind of really in all their program, you know, changing the life of a lot of artists by giving them, you know, amazing career development opportunities, but also giving them international and national visibility. Um, so whatever they do is very important for all the Southern African artists they represent, but also our collaboration, you know, that we had for the past three years have, um, you know, been fantastic for us uh, in terms of 154 and getting the support, but also being able to show all the, the fantastic Southern African African artists that um, the collection is uh, is now having, but also presenting and promoting. And this is their first pop-up art gallery, you know, uh, where we actually put the collection and the artists, you know, in honor. So uh, you'll hear more about it as well. But uh, I just wanted to say a few words and thank again the Nando's team and obviously all of you for being here. And I guess we're going to start. Thank you, Taria. Um, so my name is Gemma Rolls Bentley and I'm the Gallery Relations Manager at Artsy. So I'm going to start off by introducing our fabulous panellists. So Turia has just introduced herself and then sitting next to Turia is Tamlin Blake, who is the curator of the Nando's Global Body of Work, which we've just been hearing about. And next to Tamlin is Emma Manel, who's the founder and director of Tyburn Gallery here in London. And then sitting here on my right is Hannah O'Leary, who's the head of modern and contemporary African art at Sotheby's in London. Tamlin, I'd love to start with you, and it would be fantastic if you could tell us a little bit about the show and what it is that's surrounding us here and about the artists who are working downstairs. I'll try and keep it brief. Um, but I think to contextualize it, the most important thing to realize is that uh, Spear Arts Trust runs a development type program where we start working with artists at the level of the creative block which you see in the front there. Through that they go into through different programs and we encourage, we discuss their work, we give them motivations, uh, we help them put shows together, I generally try um, and keep them involved and ourselves involved in career development for the artists. So um, artists are our main concern. Um, the art they produce obviously is amazing and that's why we're involved in it and we're very grateful to um, Nando's for buying it and loving it and putting them on their walls and then giving us the opportunity to exhibit and put together shows like this of the artists that we've been able to work with for so many years. Uh, many of the artists here in this show have been with us for um, 8, 10, 12 years um, and have come up all the way through and are now at a place where they are exhibiting it internationally, which is fantastic. Thank you. So, Emma, can I invite you to introduce yourself? I am South African and have been collecting work from artists from Southern Africa for years. And our aim with Tyburn is to encourage, to facilitate, the, to advance the understanding and appreciation of the immense, enormous creative wealth of, um, of contemporary African art. 
Thank you. So Hannah, if you could tell us a bit about the work you do at Sotheby's and what you did at Bonhams before that. Thanks, Gemma. Um, so I have been specialising in selling South African art on the secondary market um, for since 2006. Um, and more recently, as of 2008, 2009, I expanded into the rest of Africa. Um, as you mentioned, I was with um, another auction house, Bonhams, for 10 years. And then last year, I joined Sotheby's to start sales of modern and contemporary art for Sotheby's from, from the continent, from Africa. Um, which is a new venture for us, um, a brand new department and a brand new sale. Um, but as I said, I started with South African art and, and it remains my main area of expertise and, and my primary love. Okay, thank you. So the title of our panel today is On the Market Reception of South African Art 2007 to 2017. So I think it would be great for me to um, give everyone a, a, a current piece of information which comes from the most recent TFAF Art Market Report. And the report found that um, in Africa and Oceania, Africa and Oceania accounts for just 1% of auction sales globally. And for Africa, the auction sales figured, figures peaked in 2013 at around $32 million, but fell to around $14 million in 2016. The majority of auction sales in Africa emanate from South Africa, where $16.6 million sales were recorded in 2015, and that dropped to $11.5 million last year. So that means that 80% um, of the African auction sales in 2016 were coming from South Africa. And so it makes a lot of sense that that's, the, that's what we're focusing on this evening. So Hannah, I think it'd be wonderful to start with you and to hear a little bit about what the last 10 years have looked like and in your experience, who it is that's buying South African art. Absolutely, um, those figures are really interesting um, because they tell part of the story, but certainly there's a, a real lack of market information when it comes to um, contemporary art from, from Africa. Um, there are all sorts of studies and companies who, who monitor the markets elsewhere in the, in the world. Um, when I started working with South African Art in 2006, um, an event like this I don't think could have happened here in London. It's amazing to see such a full room and so many people who work in the industry in London. Um, that just didn't exist 10 years ago. Um, we were um, first, the first auction house to, to hold sales of African art outside the continent. Um, I have to pay credit to um, the October Gallery who are sitting in the room here because they have been selling contemporary art from Africa for since 1979. So, so they were absolutely the pioneers in this field, but they were really um, the sole um, players in the market until, until more recently. Um, the, the, the sales that we held were very much driven from um, African collectors. Um, so we were selling African paintings within a sale category that didn't really fit right with, with, um, with what we were selling. Um, and yet South African pictures were, were selling extremely well and, and making good prices. And that really reflects the strength of the South African economy and the growing wealth in South Africa. Um, so, so we decided to hold a South African sale. Um, we didn't know whether we would be able to put one together. We didn't know if it would be successful. Um, but thankfully, both of those things came true. And, and Bonhams have held two South African sales a year ever since then, um, and very quickly dominated that market, or at least the market outside South Africa. At the same time, there's been a, a huge development of the market in South Africa. South Africa is a really interesting uh, country in the continent because it is, like you say, it dominates the art market. Um, there has been a thriving art market there for a very, very long time. Uh, Sotheby's uh, started sales, auction sales in South Africa in, in the 1960s um, uh, and were active there until um, about 10 years ago when, when we ended our association with one of the local auction houses. Um, so there has been a thriving market and, and a, a culture of collecting art there for much longer than other parts of the continent. Um, in those 10 years though, we have seen so many um, other things develop outside the continent that has really brought a spotlight to Africa. Um, and that, I think the auction houses have a small part to play in that. Um, it takes all sorts of daring curators and galleries and people like Emma, you know, setting up a, a contemporary art gallery that specializes in African art in London is a, is a daring thing because it is unknown. These are unknown artists. The, the, the people have, high ex have expectations and stereotypes when it comes to Africa and African art. And obviously the overheads to run a gallery in London are, are massive. Um, and it takes people like Emma and the primary market to develop an artist and their, um, their reputation and their following so that we can come along and then work, work with artists on, on the secondary market. Um, but obviously then we bring a, a very public face to the market and 
um, you know, the, the market reports, TPAF reports, are very much based on auction sales because they're so public. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, and you just led us beautifully into a, a next question, which is for Emma. Um, you're, you know, Tyburn Gallery is a relatively young gallery, very successful. You have a fantastic program. It would be wonderful if you could share a little bit with us about what that experience has been like for you. Um, as you mentioned, you are South African, but your gallery is here. And it would be great to hear what the collecting communities are like that you've been engaging with. It's been, I think we've been very fortunate because Tyburn started a moment when there's a lot of work being done by people like Toria, 154, um, you know, Sotheby's, Bonhams. The interest and excitement about contemporary African art was there already. A lot of the education, a huge amount still needs to be done in terms of breaking down notions of what constitutes contemporary African art. You know, we still get um, extremely traditional people coming into the gallery with extremely traditional notions of what could constitute work from the continent. And you know, amazement that contemporary African art you know, should look as contemporary as, as work from anywhere else in the world. But what has been incredibly, one of the most heartening things is I think the work from artists from the, from the continent talks about issues which you think are particular to the continent. You know, disparities, post-colonial experience, um, gender, and, gender and sexual identification. And, and these are particularly African issues, but they seem to resonate with a global audience. And you know, we noticed this particularly when we had an exhibition by Lady Scully, a very young South African artist. Her preoccupations are gender and, and identity. And it, the show opened two days before you had the inauguration of Trump, I think, on the Friday, and then the march of millions of people protesting against Trump on particularly gender issues. And the audiences that came into our gallery immediately connected that this sort of global movement on gender with Lady Scully's work. And I thought, this is particularly, this is strong South African work, but it's, it has a global resonance. And that's one of the most heartening things of having a contemporary African gallery in London, you know, an international platform like London. I'm so pleased that um, you referenced Lady Scully in that show as, as an example, because it was a beautiful show. And I remember actually that you produced an edition of the big of the mural, which was a you know much lower price point uh, work. And I wonder what has your experience been with younger collectors and people who are starting to build a collection but are um, you know coming in at entry level? Have you found an appetite there for the South African artists that you work with? Absolutely. I think that's one of the attractions of contemporary African art is that it, the quality is extraordinary and the price points are relatively affordable. Do you know, I think there's still work to do with, because our overheads are enormous and bridging that divide is difficult. I think the ways to do that is to have limited editions of, of, of prints. Um, but it's, it's part of what we see as educating a wider audience and future collectors uh, in contemporary African art. I think um, also a lot of what we're offering is, is new and fresh and different to what people are used to seeing um, with the contemporary market here in London. And that really does attract a younger audience. I mean, even at Sotheby's, um, where auction buyers tend to be a generation older than maybe at, at contemporary galleries, our, our audience at Sotheby's for contemporary African art is much younger than in our contemporary auctions. I think this is where an, a forum like Artsy is so important too, because the online brings opens up access to young, uh, entirely new collector base who then are exposed. They might have been intimidated by walking into a blue chip gallery, but online, you know, is far more accessible. I think in bringing in a whole new generation, Artsy plays a very, very important role. I'm obviously delighted <laughs> that you credited Artsy there. But, but I, do, I do think that it's definitely interesting to think about um, the role that online has played in terms of international buyers being able to bid on, on your auctions, Hannah, and then also the online marketplace, like Artsy, but also the editorial that goes around it um, that is you know, largely accessible and is widely accessible and is also filling that educational role that you, um, that you mentioned as well. So Turia, I'd love to bring you in now. Emma already mentioned the fantastic work that you're doing and 
the role that 154 plays in the growth of this market, but it would be wonderful to hear from you a little bit about, well, I think two things. Number one, the kind of galleries that you are working with and where they come from, and then also the collectors that, that are visiting your fairs and also engaging online. So in terms of uh, collectors uh, at 154, and even when we started the fair, uh, we knew as a starting point that South Africa had a very strong uh, art market and this is where the collectors from Africa were, you know, based and that we needed to really target that um, that market to make it happen. So even in terms of the good galleries, you know, the best galleries um, on the continent that everybody were talking about were based in South Africa. We did several trips in South Africa because, believe it or not, we're not the first art fair specializing in uh, contemporary African art. There's some very good ones ones in South Africa. Um, so even for me, in terms of education, because there was so little here that I could find out about contemporary African artists, etc., that a lot of the trips I took were in South Africa to kind of meet the artists, meet the galleries, and also convince them to join in in a project where, you know, it was really new and um, we didn't know if we were going to have a market or collectors. And um, it was quite an, a very educational um, a place to be able to, uh, to be and, like, uh, get, you know, a, a, a very dynamic uh, contemporary African art market. And um, we invited some of the galleries. Eventually, you know, in our first quota of galleries coming from the continent versus galleries from Europe and the US, obviously we had a larger numbers of South African galleries compared to the rest uh, of Africa. But I have to say the scenario is quite different today. So it's also showing that the whole continent is moving in terms of, uh, you know, art market and galleries, you know, finding a place wherever they're from. We had a gallery from Ghana this year, from Ethiopia, you know, so things are changing and they're getting more and more uh, diverse, the gallery we're getting from the continent. But what's very interesting to come back to the online, you know, um, I guess introduction for us and our partnership is the first thing we heard for the galleries who are based in Mali or, you know, in South Africa, but even, you know, in other countries is that it gave them an option to be seen by collectors that, you know, would have never seen them before and never gone to Africa to actually see the work of the artists etc. And for so many cases, you know, before we even started the fair, because this is a bit how we work, where Artsy present the art fair before you know, it actually go lives and, you know, it's a, it's a full event. And a lot of the galleries were extremely happy because not only they sometimes made sell, made reservation, but also connected to people that they would have never collected before, you know, or even connected from the U.S. who wouldn't make the trip to London or to New York, but still, you know, were able to make sales um, using Artsy as a platform. And I'm not making a promotion here. But carry on, please. <laughs> but it is true. Um, in terms of, you know, where we were in 2013 when we launched, 154 to where we are now, uh, where we started with an annual event and we are hopefully celebrating in 2018 a triannual event, you know, with having another edition besides New York in Marrakesh on the continent, is to also show that that story is changing, evolving extremely fast. Um, we still, in terms of collectors, obviously counting a lot on international collectors, and this is why we are in London and in New York during freeze. You know, it's strategically for us a date we chose to make sure sure that we're able to get visibility to African artists, you know, to the international market, because this is what I thought was missing in terms of strong link to make the, the, the Africans, you know, artists or African diaspora and artists to be much more visible and also to accelerate this value that we're talking about where they are, are much more affordable, you know, than the rest of the market. And one reason of that is because they are not part of the international collections, they're not part of international museums, because we don't have all this on the continent, you know. So so um, we need to collect and like you know support all the collectors from Africa and kind of develop the collector base. So this is the duty of all of us, of the galleries in London, in Africa, etc. But we also are very dependent on the collectors coming from you know Europe and the US who are actually making our majority of uh, our sales, you know, at 154 in New York and in London. So the you know the initiative the initiative to go to Africa has been dear to our heart and you know in concept, you know, it's very good and this is what we wanted to do since year one but we're able to do it in year five or six because we now have a group of followers of collectors who will follow us on in Marrakesh and like you know come with us if you know the sales from the local collector base is not strong enough but I think you know there's a starting point and we need to build this and it's very important North Africa is one of the 
after South Africa, probably the most exciting and dynamic, you know, uh, collector base we have, you know, on the continent. Uh, we have had, you know, quite a, a strong market, not as strong as um, I'm saying that because I'm Moroccan, but uh, <laughs> not as strong at all uh, than the South Africa. But uh, it's also, um, you know, places that we see that are moving on. So South Africa has been the leader for now, you know, forever and ever because you had schools, you had auction houses, you had so many galleries, you know, in the in the country that the other countries did not have. Um, but I see that, you know, Nigeria with the dynamic economy, you know, in the past 10 years, you know, have catch up as well and, you know, has become quite a strong, you know, dynamic market as well. And, you know, Morocco also, I mean, it all, you know, is very correlated to the economy of the countries in the, you know, in, in uh, I, I, that's my view. There's a dynamic, you know, correlation between the, you know, how well the art scenes is doing in a country with, you know, how, how many collectors we have, how much, uh, you know, the artists can make a living locally rather than exporting themselves. I think I'll stop. And, and that, well, that's perfect because there you brought us back to the artist, which is, of course, what this is all about. And Tamlin, as well as your role at Nando's, you are a practicing artist. And I think it would be fantastic for you to tell us a little bit about um, what the opportunities are on the continent for artists, but also internationally. And I think something to consider, Turia mentioned already, um, is the public institutions and the big collections that exist on, on the continent, which is not so many, although, as, as we know, the new uh, museum is going to be opening in Cape Town in September, which is going to have 100 galleries over nine floors. It's a, a massive achievement. And I, I think it would be interesting to hear from you what that means in terms of opportunities on the continent for, for artists and how they can raise their profile internationally? Being a South African artist for, for many reasons, um, you, you're kind of stuck in that market uh, and getting out is incredibly difficult. We're way down south in the middle of nowhere. So um, I think opportunities like this have been phenomenal for artists who are already quite high up in their careers that just need that next level, just need some international exposure, uh, just need to be seen by another group of people to, to take that next step. Um, and I think opportunities like this are exactly what's called for. Um, you know, getting into the, uh, preferably European, but any international gallery, really. Uh, for myself, um, you know, if it weren't for the collectors, I wouldn't be where I am today. So it is really about, um, getting into new markets, new collections, and hoping that through that uh, you gain recognition um, and sort of your career grows with that. I think the worry, the worry with the new museum is that um, in South Africa we've got a pretty starved, underfunded public sphere. And the worry about a very large private initiative is that it takes even further from a very challenged public sphere. And I think the success of the museum well, yes, it'll depend on whether important collectors come and see fantastic works from the continent. But even more important is that the museum establishes itself as a cultural center for, local, for South, South Africans and Africans of all socioeconomic levels will access and, uh, and, and be able to treat as they own. And that is going to be the challenge. Yeah, and, and it's a very good point. And certainly that's something um, in the branding around the launch is it's there in, in the uh, kind of the description is about accessibility. So let's wait and see. And hopefully that is what, what comes of it. Emma, what would you say um, young artists could be doing to be discovered and recognized by a gallery like yours? Do you know, it's very challenging because I think a lot of local, a lot of South African artists, but this holds true for, for artists across the continent, recognize the importance of international representation. The challenge is a discrepancy in, in exchange rates. So for a South African artist to suddenly start selling in pounds where their prices have been set in rands means that a large part of their local audience can no longer afford them. And this is a problem. You know, how do you balance a local market with an international career? It's a tricky one, and I don't think there are any perfect answers, but I think perhaps there's a way of differentiating work so that you know, some of the work is sold locally and other work is sold to international, and thereby you foster an international career that still has local roots. But that, you know, I think international exposure is vital, international representation is vital, but a local, local roots and local access 
is, is, is fundamental as well. And the trick is to bridge that. Okay, so we have around five, five or so minutes left. It's obviously very busy and there's a lot of amazing art for people to see and there's going to be, we're here for much longer, so there's a lot of opportunity for people to mix with each other and mix with our panellists and come and speak to them directly. Does anybody, um, don't be shy, would anyone like to um, ask a question of our, of our panellists and you're free to use my microphone. Thank you very much. Thank you all. That was super interesting. Oh, Thank you. Time. I'm sorry, I'm always here with a question. Um, I just, it sort of touches on what Emma just said, but also, Turi, you said something about the economy and how the market is tied to the economy and the South African economy isn't great at the moment. So I just wondered what your views are for 2017 to 2027. Um, do you think the market will move north? Well, or? I think that we're very lucky, Melanie, that we're talking about South Africa, who has like some of the strongest galleries and that they're able to sell, you know, in all those international art fairs. Um, the Stevenson and the Goodman galleries and the, the Blank and the Smack galleries, they're all in, you know, Freeze and Armory and Fiac even and also um, Art Basel. So for them, you know, at least for their established artists and a pool of them, um, they are probably exporting themselves quite a lot right now, you know, and selling uh, outside uh, South Africa. But I mean, I know for a fact that, you know, the two or three fairs, I think there's three now, the Turban Art Fair, obviously Cape Town Art Fair, and Joburg Art Fair are expanding and celebrating the 10 year anniversary, etc. So they wouldn't be able to do all that if that uh, market was so, um, so dead locally. Um, so I do believe, you know, just by, you know, uh, if there are, you know, um, sound business people, you know, they wouldn't go expanding their fairs and doing all that if uh, the market was not um, strong enough locally. I know that for a fact, every time, you know, I talk to South African or South African expert, they always tell me that, uh, uh, you know, South Africa is very different than the rest of Africa because of the strong collector base. So I do believe that while, you know, this um, economy is not doing so great, that hopefully you'll have a strong enough local um, collector base that, uh, you know, will continue to support, will continue to, um, the galleries will continue to be able to participate to international art fairs and maybe sell more work there. Um, I mean, I do believe that this, as I said, is very true for the other countries, you know, and I've seen that, you know, with Nigeria, with Morocco, uh, I've seen this with, uh, you know, countries like uh, Ghana, Kenya, you know, even Ethiopia, you know, has been doing well. Um, so I think that it's also uh, about the, the context of the country and, you know, you know, what they're going through also at the, at the moment. So there's obviously several, you know, variables and factors that would, you know, impact directly the, um, the the South African market, but I think in that particular case, the rand seems to be the biggest issue. So actually, in rand terms, the market has been up on, on um, in that time it's gone up. Um, I also think we're benefiting slightly from, sadly, from Brexit and the downturn in the um, uh, the de devaluation of the pound sterling. It makes London, a much more attractive place for overseas buyers to, to buy art. Thank you. Do we have one more question before we wrap up? There's time for one more. But also fine if not, because there's lots of opportunity to keep talking. And please, please do um, come and speak to our panelists and, um, and keep the conversation going throughout the evening while you're enjoying the exhibition that's here. So that just leaves me to thank everybody on the panel for contributing. It's been a brilliant conversation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gemma.